so glad you're all here. Um, it's going to be a change of pace from what we've done today. Uh, we've had a busy day. We've learned a lot. We've supported our community and learned about our community. 
We've learned about a wonderful family and their investment in our community. And tonight we're going to take time. You know, God has given us the gift of healing. And in that gift of healing, one thing that's as important as any other factor in healing is rest. And sometimes we forget to rest. So tonight, as is our custom, we'd like to take a few minutes to uh, think about the day that we've had, the Sabbath that we've had, the many blessings that we've had, and to just sit back and relax and listen to the words of some very spiritual songs and a word of devotion from our pastor. So I hope that uh, you enjoy it. I want to thank Roger Curley. Roger is our, uh, our local artist that has just been playing the piano. He has a real gift. And uh, we just love it when Roger plays for us. And that was Roger. He's a member of our church and sings in our choir and often helps out with the music of the church. And then we want to welcome my good friend Faith Isham, who has been um, around Ohio for many years and been friends of the Harding Hospital, the Harding family. Um, she was uh, raised in Kentucky, but we worshiped together in a little church called Manchester, Ohio, and then in Portsmouth, Ohio. So we've known each other for many years. For many years she was performing. Now she's teaching vocal and teaching music classes at Westminster Choir College at Rutgers University, and I believe she said Manhattan University. So we're thrilled to have her here, and we're just thrilled that she could be here. And she she's able to express the words of a song as well as anyone I've ever uh, accompanied. And so it's always a thrill for me to play for her. You know, and besides the rest, music is a great part of healing too. God gave us that gift and music can do something that nothing else can do. And so tonight we're just saying, you've had a busy weekend. We appreciate your coming, but now if you'll just sit back and relax and meditate on the goodness of God. So let's, let's bow our heads for just a word of prayer. Dear Lord, we just want to thank you for the gift of healing. And we want to thank you for the part that music plays in that gift. And tonight, we just invite you here to be at this service with us as we conclude this busy weekend. And we, Lord, we have just been blessed by all of the people that you have sent to our community to help us and to spread your word. In the God's name, amen. Uh, pro you have a pink slip of paper that was in your bulletin, and that's the program for this evening. So thank you all for coming. Before I begin to sing, I would just like to add my personal thanks to George Harding for inviting me to come today to sing um, because he has meant so much to me in my life, as has Harding Hospital. George may not remember, but that as a little girl, when I was a little girl, he had me come here and sing at the Harding, at the old church and then had me sing at camp meeting. Later invited me to meet when he was in New York. George, do you remember the day we met Shirley Verrett? Some of you may know this great African-American singer who George already knew and she had obviously fond feelings for him. But George has, as you well know, um, for me, lived a life of service not only for his family, but for his community, and for the mental health of hundreds, may I even say thousands, of people. So I'm so delighted I can be here today and celebrate Harding Hospital, which has been a light, a beacon to many. These three songs that we're going to perform for you, um, the first two are spirituals. The first one I heard 
uh, not Shirley Verrett, but Leontine Price sing in San Francisco in 1982. <laughs> yes, I remember the evening. I remember the recital. It changed my life. She had already been um, singing a beautiful recital of Strauss and other German songs and English songs, but this was her encore, the first song I'm going to sing, This Little Light of Mine, and this was the arrangement that she sang. And so I find it to be such an uplift to me, and I hope it will be to you. But the other two then, the second song, uh, His Name So Sweet, expresses, of course, the joy that we can feel in the Lord. The third and final song to me, of, of not the final song, but the third of that group, is Eternal Life, which I'm sure many of you know. But I hope that as we perform it, you will think of the meaning of the words, meaning of the words, and how they have changed, how we may be instruments of God's peace and bring joy and comfort to all we meet, as has Harding Hospital throughout these many, many years.
Thank you, Carolyn, and thank you, Roger. I don't know if you knew that. Kurt Vonnegut, uh, the American uh, writer, once said that uh, when he dies, he wants people to put this epitaph on his uh, gravesite. The greatest proof that I need for the existence of God is music. And I'm telling you, <laughs> from an evolutionary standpoint, there is no reason for music. It does not give you shelter, it does not give you food or drink, but this gives you something for the soul that proves that God is real. So thank you very much, uh, Faith. Thank you very much, Carolyn, and also Roger, for blessing us this evening with the music you brought for us. Thank you for reminding us that God is alive. Uh, I will have the privilege to do uh, a few final uh, remarks, spiritual remarks, before uh, Elder Harding comes here and he do does his final comments and benediction uh, for this uh, centennial. And I come to you, I have to stay here, okay, I'm so not used to it, okay. Uh, I usually have a mic on my ear. Uh, I come to you today, this evening, with uh, two points and a poem. No, I'm kidding you, and I, I don't have a poem. But I have two points. How do we summarize what we've experienced today? And here is my first point, and it's, it's found in uh, Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 9. Only take heed to yourself and diligently keep yourself, lest you forget the things your eyes have seen, and lest they depart from your heart all the days of your life, but teach them to your children and to your children's children. Here Moses celebrates his uh, centennial plus 120 years of his life and 80 years of his ministry. And he says to the Israelites, only keep yourself lest you forget. And I would like to tell you for those of you who are not familiar with uh, the Hebrew language, the language in which this particular text was written, in Hebrew there are only two grammatical tenses, past and future. And interestingly enough, when uh, the biblical writers wanted to express an idea about the future, we call it prophecy, guess which grammatical tense they used? Some people have listened to my song as well, good. Actually, contrary to our Western logic, they use past. Because the Jewish people understood that the only safe way of walking toward the future is by fixing your eyes toward all these marks of God's presence in the past. So today we were reminded about the great past that Harden Hospital has established for our community here. So my first point is, let us not forget. Let us build upon what the generations of Hardings have given us. And here I come to the second point. And I figured out the second point today. I didn't, have, I didn't prepare this months in advance. I was listening today to the panel discussions. I was listening today to the presentations that were done. And if there is one thing that I personally would like to take, and I would like to encourage you to take it too, is that being a psychiatrist, being a doctor, being a pastor, being a human being, means to be a shepherd of other broken spirits and other broken souls. Shepherd people. And I heard this message today over and over and over again. And I would like to tell you how this happens, and you can see it in the history of our Hardings. And uh, this story is found uh, in um, Exodus chapter 3 and 4. Moses, at the age of 80, receives his call from God. And God tells him, you're going to be the shepherd of my people. You're going to be the shepherd of these two and a half million broken souls. 
and Moses objects, and finally he brings this objection in chapter 4, verses 2 through 4. God says, go. And he says, they're not going to believe me. And then God asks him, what is this thing in your hand? And Moses answers, it's a shepherd's staff. Throw it on the ground. And he threw it, and it became a snake. Moses jumped back in fear, and God says, reach out and grab it. And it became a staff in Moses' hands. Do you remember what question did uh, God ask Moses? Come on, this is not a rhetorical question. Did you remember the question? What's in your hand? Why did God ask this question? God does not uh, know the answer. He asks you in order to get the answer, right? When God asks us questions, it's not for His benefit. It's for our benefit. He knew the answer. Oftentimes, we overlook what's in our hands. And Moses says, it's a shepherd's staff. It's not a scepter. It's not the weapon of a king. It's simple staff. And what happens then is really amazing. Just listen to that. The staff in Moses' hand represented three things. Moses was a shepherd. This was his identity. This was a symbol of his income. And thirdly, this was a symbol of his influence. Symbol of his identity, shepherd. Symbol of his, his income, this is how he earned his money. And symbol of his influence over his sheep. And then God says, throw it on the ground. God says to Moses, if you throw on the ground your identity, your income, and your influence, I'm going to make it come alive. And you're going to be able to be a shepherd of my people. And I don't know if you've noticed, but from that point on, all the miracles that happened in the life of Moses, all the miracles that God performed through Moses, happened through this simple shepherd stuff. So today, on behalf of God, I would like you to take this from uh, this centennial. Take this question. What is it in your hand? God has given you something that if you lay down at His feet, He is going to transform it and make it alive. So today on behalf of God, I ask you, what it is in your hand? And probably this is going to be one of the most important questions that you have been ever asked. So, these were my thoughts on what I would personally take from this centennial. And I would like to invite you to repeat after me. Just close your eyes. I guess you're already tired, so it will feel good. Close your eyes. And consider it like a, a prayer we will uh, ask God. So I would like to ask you to repeat after me. Oh Lord, you know how in, uh, inadequate I sometimes feel. You've challenged me today to work for the benefit of others, to be your healing hand, to speak words of encouragement. And to, and to restore broken people into a relationship with you. I need your help. That's why I'm turning my talents, my energy, and my whole life to you. Do whatever is necessary. 
to accomplish this purpose through me. I will study, I will prepare, and I will be available. But most of all, I will be looking constantly to you. Bless my efforts and help me to not be afraid to lay down my identity, to lay down at your feet my income, and to lay down my influence for you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. come to the end of a, a glorious weekend. We have, uh, have remembered uh, many people, many events, uh, many uh, successes, and some not so successes. We have, uh, have remembered uh, friends who have come for this weekend. And have enjoyed uh, renewing our friendships and uh, learning together and worshiping together. We have uh, learned uh, what the future may hold. Of course, we know that the only thing that we know will not be correct is predicting the future. But uh, we have uh, thought and given educated guesses to the future. We're thankful for the church staff here, for Carolyn Sowards, Pastor Julian, and others, for the leadership they've given us. 
Most of all, we are appreciative to each one of you for coming and being a part of this and having uh, contributed to the success of this event. We have uh, been inspired. Uh, we have uh, been encouraged and uh, our hope for the future is certainly have been strengthened. Now we uh, are uh, at a time that we are going to separate again and uh, we will look forward to additional meetings like this in the future. Something that uh, the church today uh, and this weekend has been a uh, a place of healing and we are thankful to Elder Cooper for what he has brought to us. So we uh, ask you each one to think of the blessings you have, to think of the opportunities we have in the future. And shall we each bow our heads as we ask the Lord to bless us as we complete this uh, weekend. Gracious God, uh, we are thankful to you for your many blessings, but we're thankful that we have been able to share this weekend together, that we can remember the pioneers the sustainers who uh, made the Harding Hospital a place of healing and who continue to make it a place of healing. We are thankful for each person who has contributed, for those who have supported us in the community, and uh, not only in this local church, but uh, in the church structure in Ohio and the Mideast and uh, around the globe. Now we ask that you will bless each of us as we go our way, that we may uh, continue to grow spiritually, mentally, physically, in all ways, and that we all can come closer to Jesus, our Lord and Savior. Bless us now. And guide us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you again for coming. And we uh, certainly look forward, we certainly look forward to hearing from you and uh, seeing you again soon. Uh, and you know that you're always welcome to come back home here in Worthington.